Hey, Zach, great to have you on. Um, it's a very exciting day for Warp. Something we have in common is we both spent some time uh, inside of Google as, as software engineers, um, and you were you were a pretty big deal. You're a principal engineer on the <laughs> Docs team. So tell me a little, little bit about that experience. Uh, how did it shape uh, you and, and what you're doing today? I'm not sure I was such a big deal, but thank you. Um, yeah, so I was at Google for about eight years. Uh, I was always on Google Docs, like you said. Uh, I, I built or helped build a lot of Google Sheets in particular. That was the product I, I knew best. And then when I left, I was a principal engineer and the, the tech lead for the Docs suite. For Warp, one of the key product innovations that we're trying to do is take this kind of very outdated old school piece of desktop software and make it cloud native, make it collaborative, make it work for teams. And that was that was basically what we did with Google Docs, but with Google Docs, it was for office productivity software and for Warp, we're doing it for, you know, the terminal, which is, you know, one of the most used developer tools. So I think both from an engineering perspective and from a product perspective, a lot of what I learned in terms of like how to build a product like this and what's valuable about it uh, translate directly to what I'm working on right now. You know, the terminal is an interesting piece of software. It's widely used, uh, but hasn't seen a lot of love from the developer community. So what um, what inspired you to go after the terminal? Um, what was exciting about it? What were some of the challenges as, as you were just sort of getting started? Right, so part of it was just personal. So I've I've been an engineer now for about 20 years. I've always been a terminal user. I would not characterize myself as a terminal power user. In fact, I've always thought it's kind of a weird, frustrating, archaic tool, but you use it because as a developer, you you just have to use it. It's like so many of the applications that developers use and write are text-based applications, and that's the platform for sort of running those applications. So I've used it, but I've never been thrilled with it. On the flip side, I've always worked with other engineers who were terminal power users, who had invested a lot in configuring their terminal and learning how to use it really well. And you know, one observation I had is like, if you do that, you actually get a lot of productivity gains. Like you could actually do a lot of stuff that is hard to do as a normal developer. And so one of the product you know, inspirations was, can you build a terminal that makes that power accessible to all developers, not just to the people who like, you know, invest a huge amount of time in configuring what's a not very friendly tool. Um, the other thing that got me excited about the terminal was sort of the like, you know, the business, the business opportunity and, you know, really macro level, I think the business opportunity is that today every, every company is kind of a software company. It's like you have developers at any company that has any scale. Uh, every company uh, doesn't have enough development resources, like developers are scarce. Developer time is therefore at like a huge premium. So every company wants their developers to be more productive. Um, every company also wants their systems to be more reliable and every company wants their systems to be more secure. And what's interesting about the terminal is it sort of sits at the locus of all of those things. It's like a tool where you have a ton of leverage if you could actually meaningfully improve it to make developers more productive, to make systems more reliable and to make them more secure. And so I, I feel like that coupled with the fact that it's such a ubiquitous product and it hasn't seen much innovation, gave me conviction that this is like a pretty cool thing to try to to work on to help a lot of developers get a lot more done. Yeah, I, I, I agree with a ton of that. And it's so um, it's so interesting, like as I've worked with you at Warp, uh, some of the, the feature launches I've been most excited about have been maybe the most basic from a kind of UX point of view, like being able to use the cursor to select uh, a piece of text <laughs> or like move, move things around. And I'm just curious, now that you've spent a few years doing this, do you have any insight as to why uh, this this particular piece of software was untouched by um, by sort of modern UX techniques? It's a great question. So I guess two thoughts on that. One, I think there is a ton of developer activity and has been over the past 20 years trying to make the terminal UX better. Uh, like if you look at... Uh, if you take GitHub stars, for instance, as a proxy of a project's popularity, some of the most popular open source projects of all time, like full stop, like more popular than like React and jQuery are things that make 
like your terminal work marginally better. Like they give you completions in the terminal or themes in the terminal. So I think that there has been a lot of interest, um, but it's it's all been within the sort of current paradigm of like, you have a terminal, you have a shell, you don't, you sort of, I would call it like innovation at the margin rather than how do you rethink from sort of first principles, the way that this application should work to help developers and development teams the most. I would say the other thing that's that has changed is more on the um, the business side. Like you've seen now, pretty much any company that takes a traditionally like single player, uh, old school desktop app, uh, like for instance Figma is doing for design or Notion for wikis, and modernizes it. It's proving that there's like significant productivity gains and real business opportunity around that. And I think people have started to realize that the terminal is a kind of similar opportunity. And so, you know, we've been able to build a company around this and having a like the resources of a company and dedicated really awesome engineers who are spending all their time thinking about this rather than a solo person on GitHub who is building a ter- like a marginal terminal improvement lets you do something that's much more like a step change in productivity for the app. And just curious how engaging with the community has helped you sort of build a better product. Yeah, the community has been absolutely key. So, you know, we are in a fortunate position where we're building something that even on the Warp team we use every day and we all have strong instincts about. But our instincts are also very biased towards the type of development that we're doing. And so, you know, by having thousands of developers who are not part of Warp using Warp every day while we're, we've been in private beta, we have... Uh, we've validated ideas about what's good in Warp, and we've also gotten a ton of feedback around things that are important for us to fix, which is you know, a lot of what we've been doing as we prepare to leave uh, private beta and go to public beta. The, the thing that we really want to sort of uh, leverage and lean into in the community going forward is, is really about can we expose points, not just of feedback on the product, but of actual contribution to how the product works through like plugins and extensions and things that the uh, developers can build to like, you know, make Warp a little bit less of a product and more of a platform where they're tailoring it to their own use cases. So we're very excited about that as well. Awesome. And and so maybe it's a great time to just talk about the future of Warp. I mean, certainly turning it into a platform is exciting. Are there other big milestones uh, this year or beyond that you're particularly uh, pumped up for? Yeah, so it's a... There's, there's two focuses. So one thing we want to do, like I mentioned, is, is turn Warp into a platform where developers can contribute and make it work great for them. The other thing that we want to do is really make Warp an incredible um, application for teams. And so over second half of this year, the focus is going to be really in, in you know, exploring some of those team use cases, building our first uh, like you know types of collaboration into Warp. And that could be collaboration that's real time, like it is in Google Docs, or it could be collaboration that's more asynchronous and is about like, how do I share commands? How do I share settings? How do I make it really easy to onboard engineers into a terminal environment? And so that those types of features are pretty much like untouched green, you know, green space. And so we're really excited now that we have this awesome, stable single user app to sort of expand into uh, team features and help make whole teams more productive. Okay, excellent. Um, well, thank you, Zach. We're super excited for you and the entire Warp team and uh, just just uh, thrilled to see all the progress that's happened and the, the stuff that's gonna come over the coming years. Thank you for all the support. I mean, I, I don't think Warp would uh, exist without uh, you know our early conversations and GV support and in, in getting the, the company and product going.